Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation, an equation with integer solutions. Let's go ahead and focus on positive integer solutions, but you can also find the negative solutions in a similar manner. So our goal is to solve the equation, the top equation, and then finding the values of x and y and adding them up. Okay, so when we have an equation like this, one of the things we can do is try to factor this. Because if you can factor a Diophantine equation, then you're in good shape. Of course, it's not the only way to do it. There are other ways. I made a video on Diophantine equations, by the way. Go ahead and check it out. And let me know what you think. So to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to use what is called Simon factoring. What is it called again? Simon's favorite factoring trick, SFFT. Okay, I just call it Simon. So to be able to use that, we're going to first consider the first two terms. What is common? There's a couple ways to go about it. You can factor out an x, and inside you're going to have 3y plus 1. But then you will continue with y, which is a little bit problematic. It can be fixed, by the way. There's other ways to approach it. But I don't like the fact that they're different, right? So I don't want to take out an x. I want to take out something so that... Uh, these two y's match. Make sense? And we can do that by taking out 3x instead of x. I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, 3x is not a common factor because this one doesn't. Well, it does. It does have it. You'll see now. So if I take out 3x, then I get y plus one third. Exactly. So I get a rational number that's perfectly fine because that'll fit the pattern that I'm looking for. Now notice that I have the same y, same amount of y, in other words, makes sense. So the next step would be to add something to both sides so that we can get a common factor. And since y is added to one third, I need to add one third to both sides. So let's go ahead and add one third here. And then we're gonna add the same thing on the right hand side so that it's balanced. But now this gives us a really good opportunity to factor it. Y plus one third is a common factor. And what do you think it's going to be preceded by? Well, since there is no number, we're just going to put a one here. Okay. Now Y plus one third is a common factor. So we'll factor it out. And the other factors is going to be 3X plus one equals 23 plus one third. If you make a common denominator, you get 70 over three. This may look a little weird because we have rational numbers on both sides, but guess what? It can be easily fixed. Multiply both sides by 3 and distribute to 3 here. You get 3y plus 1. Multiply by 3x plus 1. And these 3s cancel out, which is super duper nice. And now we end up with a super duper nice equation. It's awesome, right? Because it's already factored and we only need to look at factors of 70. What are they? 1 times 70, 2 times 35, 3 doesn't go, 4 doesn't go, 5 times 14, so on and so forth. So we're going to consider all these cases and then figure out which ones work. Why do I say which ones? Because 3y plus 1 is not an ordinary number because x and y are integers, in this case particularly positive integers, that's my focus, but you can find negative ones too. But 3x plus 1 and 3y plus 1 are numbers that are 1 mod 3. Does that make sense? When these numbers are divided by 3, they leave a remainder of 1. So we need to make sure that we, we factor 70 in such a way that both factors are in this form. Make sense? I hope it does. If not, ask questions. Okay, in the comment section, obviously. This is, this is not live. Do you think I should do a live session maybe one day? Maybe. Maybe Monday, maybe one day, who knows. But so, here's what we're going to look at. I said 1 times 70, right? Or 70 times 1. It doesn't really matter. Let's use 70 times 1. If you set those equal to these values, you can kind of automatically pretty easily, I mean, subtract 1 and divide by 3, you're going to get the x, y as an ordered pair. So x is going to be 0, y is going to be 23, 0, 23, which is a good one. And then the next one is going to be 2 times 35. But 35, unfortunately, is not 1 mod 3. It is 2 mod 3, because it's th 33 plus 2. And neither is 2, right? 
So we don't get a solution here, cross it out and continue with the next thing. The next one is gonna be five times 14. Again, three y plus one equals 14 gives you three y equals 13, 13 over three, that's not an integer, too bad. We'll continue with the next one, which is seven times 10 or 10 times seven. And this is gonna give you a good solution because uh, y is gonna be three and x is gonna be two. So two comma three is a solution. But you gotta remember, we could easily switch x and y. So if 70 times one work, then one times 70 will also work, but it'll just flip these ordered pairs. So we can safely say that if x comma y is a solution, y comma x is also a solution, if that makes sense. Okay, so we got four pairs so far. Let's continue. The next one is gonna be, uh-oh, there's nothing between seven and 10 that goes into 70. So I'm gonna have to jump to seven times 10 from here, but that's just gonna be a repeat and we're gonna be repeating the whole process. There's no need to do it. And these four solutions should be all the solutions. But again, I'm focusing on positive integers. What would you do if you had to focus on negative integers? Look at negative factors like negative 70 and what else? Okay, the rest is yours. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and look at an alternative method for this problem because this is not the only way to do it. And you know, I like to introduce alternative methods. Some people like it, some people don't. If you're one of those people who don't like it, start liking it because you're gonna see, you're gonna see that a lot. Okay, awesome. Now, another thing I can do is I can try to isolate one of the variables because in diophantine equations, sometimes if you can write one variable in, in terms of the other, it's helpful. And in this case, it doesn't matter which one I choose, but I'd like to go with Y. These two, and you're like, why are you going with Y? It's just a choice. So I take out a Y here that gives me three X plus one, right? Plus X equals 23. And now at this point, I'm not gonna just add something to both sides like I did with the first approach because this is the second method. So it's supposed to be different, right? Yes, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna subtract X, my goal is to isolate y here. So I'm gonna divide by three x plus one, and that's gonna give me the y value. Now you can think of it this way. All right, so since y is gonna be an integer, uh, this is a rational number unless three x plus one divides 23 minus x evenly with no remainder. So three x plus one needs to be an integer because x is an integer plus it needs to divide 23 minus. So you can pretty much run through all the x values. Obviously there's a limitation here. Since I'm looking for positive solutions, x needs to be less than 23, don't you think? And of course x needs to be positive, greater than zero. So x will be greater than zero and less than 23. So it, within those, you can basically find lots of lots of, you know, solutions, right? Well, not all of them are gonna work, but these are the candidates, right? These are the possibilities. But that's a lot of values to go through. Remember the first method? We only went through a few choices, right? So how can I make it a little easier? And trust me, this is not gonna be easy. Okay, don't trust me maybe on that one. But here's the thing. Uh, I can use polynomial division. The problem is I do have a negative x. First of all, let me go ahead and write it this way. Now, I'd like to be able to divide negative x by 3x easily, but that's not the case. It's not going to happen. So instead, I'll do this. I'll multiply both sides by 3, and that'll give me negative 3x. And can I just change it to 69, please? Being lazy here. Oops, I meant to write 69. Great. So I multiply both sides by 3. And since y is an integer, 3y is also an integer. But this allows me to do the following. 3y equals negative 3x. Now, Notice that if I multiply this by negative one, I get negative three X minus one. Why is that important? Because I'm trying to get that in the numerator so I can divide and split, make sense? Plus 70, uh-oh, our number emerges again, divided by three X plus one. Now let's go ahead and divide these. I know this is a really uncool way to do it, but I just wanted to show you real quick. And don't worry, I'm not gonna finish this up. I'll just show you the method. And then now this one, if you negate this, you're gonna get that right? And we get two divisors of 70 again. Same idea, but much harder way, right? These two are going to cancel out. This is negative one. Obviously, that means this is an integer. So here's what you need to do. Put the one on the other side and then multiply 
uh, cross, I mean, cross multiply, and you'll get the exact same thing. Or look at it this way and try to find the values because 3x plus 1 is to divide 70, and there's only so many values that can do that. Okay? All right, I don't think I included the results from Wolfram Alpha. Did I? Uh oh. <laughs> Too bad. One thing that's kind of interesting, right? Well, from Alpha, when I asked this question, didn't understand. Okay. And I'm like, what part of this you don't understand? If you understand what is going on in this picture, let us know in the comment section down below. This looks pretty complicated, doesn't it? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.